Friends, in today's lecture, we will continue to discuss what we had left in the last lecture, where we are looking now the response of compliance structures under impact and non impact wave loads. Just for continuity, we said that springing and ringing are different kinds of wave simulated which can cover a wide range of frequency which can also activate even the soft degrees or the compliant degrees as well as the stiff degrees in a hybrid system like TLP. These waves can be generated by modifying the Pearson Moskovitz spectrum which was originally the wind velocity. However, it has been modified to be a modal frequency and the frequency has been chosen 5 times closer to that of the such frequency of the platform to initiate the impact and non impact waves. So, impact waves will have a distinct wave height compared to the preceding and the following wave whereas, non impact waves will result in a transient response which we can easily generate using the C surface elevation proposed by the equations in the last lecture. A typical impact wave and the non impact wave looks like this as a time history. You can see here very clearly that the impact wave has a distinctly high wave height compared to the preceding and the following waves whereas, this is a transient response wave or a non impact wave which can cause a transient response which is also interesting for us to understand. So, they are attributed as springing and ringing responses in a given offshore platform which we will discuss in detail. We picked up also an triangular geometry TLP with two bases of equivalency with respect to the rectangular or a square TLP keeping initial tension in every tendon same that may be the first logic. The second logic is keeping the total T 0 same however, we changing the payload or the weight of the system. This was the conceived geometry of a triangular configuration with three column members and three pontoon members connecting the column member. These are the standard dimensions and conventions as been used in the analysis. These are four cases of triangular TLPs, square TLPs taken for the consideration at almost same water depths, but a marginal variation axial teeth tension and a marginal variation in size at about half the depth and about double the depth. So, that we want to see what would be the effect of various parameters on the equivalent triangular geometry under the influence of impact and non impact waves. So, for every square TLP of case 1, we generated two equivalent set of triangular TLPs. For example, one set of equivalent triangular TLP refers to initial pretension in every tether being same compared to that of square and triangular configuration. So, case 1 refers to back as TLP 1, TLP 2 for case 2 and so on and so forth. One can see the natural periods estimated here and the corresponding frequency in hertz for this platform of an equivalent triangular geometry. We said that springing wave and ringing wave or simulated wave loads which can activate both flexible and stiff degrees of freedom. Let us look at the typical response of one of the equivalent triangular TLP. We have a square TLP, we arrived at two equivalent triangular TLPs. This can be 
T 0 for T the same as that of square. This can be total T 0 same as that of square. So, 4 square TLPs existing in Gulf of Mexico are chosen and 2 equivalent sets of triangular configuration are arrived and analysis is done on these TLPs under the springing and ringing waves generated or simulated with the equations shown to you. Now, let us look at the responses. Please look at the screen now, you will find the response of equivalency of TLP 2, 3 and 4, pitch, heave and surge time history and the corresponding power spectral density functions of heave, pitch and surge. I am sorry for the order, but one can easily relate. Similarly, for these 3 degrees of freedom for TLP 3 and TLP 4. One can also look at the response comparison of a square TLP under impact waves with that of an equivalent triangular TLP with an impact wave. The equivalency of these results are arrived by keeping T 0 per T the same between the triangular TLPs with that of an equivalent square TLP. So, one can look at these figures and try to well, let us for completion let us also look into the fourth set. For keeping T 0 total T 0 same we also get the responses in pitch, he and such degrees. We are looking for an unidirectional wave therefore, sway response is absent for the wave predominant direction being along x axis roll response is also absent for the platform being symmetrical in nature, yaw response is also not present significantly. Therefore, we are looking only for those 3 degrees of freedom which are active in nature, surge response, heave response and pitch response time history and corresponding power spectral density functions in frequency domain of these responses. Please look at the figures now, the left hand side set so shows the response of square TLP under non impact waves, whereas the equivalent response of triangular TLPs for T 0 per T the same and total T 0 being same are now shown on the screens in parallel. Looking at these responses, one can say that response is primarily triggered in pitch degree of freedom. If you look at the curves back you will realize that pitch degree is becoming highly active compared to he and such degrees of freedom both in square as well as equivalent triangular TLP models. This is activated for a large period of time. If you look at the typical response, the typical response may look dense, may grow. like this. So, one can say that the response is more or less similar to the response of a, of a bell vibrating for a longer time. Because this is the time stream this is the pitch response in degrees 
after being struck. So, a similar response is noticed in both the geometries. That is square as well as triangular configuration. Now, let us try to compare these responses for different water depths. Let us pick up T L P 1 and T L P 3. You can realize that both of them operate on the same water depth. Of course, there is difference in initial tension and the size of the platform marginally, but water depth is same it is 300 meters. So, one can now say increased teeth tension enhances the pitch response. due to impact waves. One can also notice that the pitch response of triangular configuration is lesser compared to square configuration. If you now compare T L P 1, T L P 2 and T L P 4, let us say 2, 3 and 4. Let us compare 2, T L P 3 and 4. One can see here that water depth changes between these configurations. it increases from 300 meter to 600 meter to further 1200 meter the TLP 4 is the deepest platform what we are analyzing in the present study. So, in these cases pitch response under impact waves is significantly affected. By increase in water depth, please note for the same water depth, pitch response is influenced by increase in teeth tension. For increase in water depth, pitch response also influenced. In this case, Fortunately, this statement still holds good triangular TLP responses in all the cases equivalency are found to be lesser than that of a square TLP. If you look at the response for non impact waves, I should say that increase in water depth does not influence the ringing response. In at least pitch degree of freedom, this explicitly true when you keep T 0 same. So, impact waves cause ringing response 
in pitch degree of freedom because the typical response look like ringing of the bell response ringing response is undesirable because pitch degree of freedom needs to be with the minimum response. The reason being it is one of the rotational degrees of freedom. Let us talk about non impact waves. They cause springing response Let us look at the typical time history of these responses once again. These are the typical time history response and the corresponding power spectral density function in frequency domain of square as well as equivalent triangular TLPs and the non impact waves for two different established cases T 0 per tether being same or T 0 total being same between the triangular configurations and the existing square configurations of the platform. It is very interesting that heave response, heave response is being triggered in both square as well as triangular TLPs near to the natural frequency near to the natural frequency of that of the one causing the springing response. So, one can say that heave response is triggered at a frequency closer to its natural frequency of the system. This is true in both square and equivalent triangular. This causes what we call as springing response. So, friends heave being a stiff degree is not expected to have larger response, but under non impact waves springing response is initiated that is the first drawback we have under non impact waves. The second one heave we know is coupled with such degree of freedom very strongly. So, this influences even the surge response as well. One can also see that heave response has got a broadband. Heave response is broadband frequency commonly noticed in both the geometries square as well as equivalent triangular TLPs of various water depths at TLP 2, 3 and 4 respectively. By comparing the springing response in heave degree of freedom with TLP 3 and 1, one can easily see 
that the heave response decreases with the increase in tension. If you compare the heave response for different TLPs at different water depths, one can also see that the heave response increases again with increase in water depth compared to TLP 2, 3 and 4, 3 is at 600 meter, TLP 2 is half of that, TLP 4 is double of this. So, one can very easily see the water depth increase also increases the stiff degree of freedom which is heave response. So, heave response in both square and triangular shows burst phenomena. The only good thing about is there is no rapid build up. It has got a gradual decay in all cases. Comparatively, equivalent triangular TLPs showed lesser response in heave degree or I should say lesser springing response comparison or comparison compared with square tail. So, there is a very dangerous phenomena which happens here since heave degree is triggered for a broad band frequency and it is also closer to the natural frequency, this may cause fatigue failure in tethers. Therefore, one can say heave response under non impact waves, which we call as springing waves, pose threat to the stability of the platform. because because they occur at a frequency closer to heave degree of freedom natural frequency so friends one can say that impact waves cause ringing response non impact waves cause springing response. In ringing response, pitch degree of freedom is influenced. In springing response, heave degree of freedom is influenced this can result in fatigue failure of tethers. It can also cause stability issues to the platform. 
pitch degree of freedom being rotational challenges the operability of the platform which also causes differential heave which in turn will affect T 0 values which can also cause teether pull out which can also result in stability issues. Increased teeth tension enhances these troubles, but lesser in triangular configuration. Increased water depth enhances pitch response due to impact waves, which is ringing. but less influencing the triangular TLP broadband frequency content of springing response in heave degree of freedom occurs closer to the natural frequency in heave degree which can result in fatigue failure of tethers. Increased teeth attention results in decrease of heave response in non impact waves however this effect is more positive in triangular tlp configuration so friends we have seen distinctly two different kinds of responses which happen in stiff degrees of freedom like pitch and heave. One under impact waves causing ringing, other under non impact waves causing springing response which can affect the safe functionality or operability of the platform as well as can result in teether pull out and fatigue failure of teethers. Let us now extend this study on a TLP again for extreme waves. So, we will quickly see what are extreme waves, what are the causes which can result in extreme waves. One could be due to wave current interaction, the second could be change in bathymetry, wind effects and wave directional effects, the third could be 
the space and time of focused waves can result in extreme waves. The fourth is very interesting non-linear wave wave interaction. what we call as higher order waves can also result in extreme waves. Now, the question comes have they occurred anywhere? Have such waves occurred anywhere? Answer is interesting on 1st January 1995 Dropner platform operating in North Sea at Stat Oil location experienced an extreme wave. This platform is located in North Sea about 100 miles east of Shetland Islands it is also seen again at Eura Harbor in Japanese sea. So, such extreme waves are observed even recorded in offshore installation sites. So, friends it is interesting to examine the platform response under such extreme waves. So, now our study is more focused on how these waves are recorded, how equivalent waves of this type can be simulated and what is the validation of the simulated wave with that of the recorded wave. Then if the simulation wave is fine, let us see the response of the platform under these waves. So, friends now I am showing you the time series plot of a Dropner wave occurred in the specific site location in North Sea. Since it occurred and recorded on 1st of January, this is also called as a new year wave. So, that is a typical time history of sea surface elevation which has got distinctly high peaks compared to that of the preceding and the successing waves. So, such extreme waves do occur though may be a random phenomena, but they do occur in offshore site conditions. Now, the issue comes how do you generate these waves or how do you simulate these waves. Before we understand that let us try to ask what are the effects of extreme waves I mean why are we interested in studying the response under these extreme waves. These extreme waves are expected to cause irreparable damage to offshore structures. They can even affect sea going vessels they may result in inoperable condition where the platform need to be shut down for extreme operation. It may of course, cause serious discomfort to the crew on board which can challenge the personal safety. Therefore, responses under under such waves 
will improve the designer's knowledge certainly without any doubt. We will try to apply these waves on a square TLP. Now, how to generate this kind of waves? There are two models available in the literature. One is called free wave model This is simulated using John Swap spectrum the governing equation is given here Call equation 1. The sea surface elevation simulated from this extreme wave from the spectrum is given by which can be a function of space and time. Nothing but the summation of series of waves. plus summation of again series of another set of waves which has got a T i component with cos k i x of k i x minus x 0 minus omega i T minus T 0 equation 2. In these two equations, A r i is given by 2 p r s omega delta omega the spectral value and A t i is given by 2 p t s omega delta omega. where P r and P t are percentage of energy in the random and transient wave. Such that the total percentage becomes 100 or let us say at least a factor of 1. So, using these equations spectrum is modified and generated and sea surface elevation is now shown on the screen. While generating the sea surface elevation the random wave component the transient wave component are kept as 80 and 20 percent equations have been used to generate random wave component separately and transient wave component separately and then they are superimposed to have a combined sea surface elevation which looks like this. In this sea surface elevation at a chosen time one can very clearly see a distinctly high and extreme wave happening in a given simulated set of series of waves. So, let us compare the simulated wave with that of the recorded wave newer wave was recorded at time 264.5 seconds with significant wave height 11.92 meters 
maximum wave height 25.6 meters and therefore, the ratio becomes 2.14 using the spectral function and CFS elevation a typical new year wave is simulated exactly at 264.5 seconds from this history you can see here. The H s of the simulated wave is about 12.1 meter and H max is about 27 meter and the ratio is closely matching with the recorded new wave. Similarly, in not C extreme wave was recorded at T is 730 seconds at H s H max ratio being 3.19. A wave was simulated of the same nature using the equation shown in the last slide exactly at 730 seconds and the ratio is closely matching to that of the observed waves. So, extreme waves a typical new year wave observed at drop net platform and a not see extreme wave which was also observed in Urua Arbor in Japanese sea were simulated and used for the loading occurring on TLP. The TLP model is going to be a square model which is shown in the screen now. All typical dimensions are borrowed from the standard literature. So, 3 TLPs at various water depths 300, double and further double are considered for the analysis. The natural periods of these 3 TLPs are given to me here in all the active degrees of freedom and the responses under not C freak wave at instant angle of approach being 0 is shown on 3 degrees of freedom and the corresponding power spectral density function in frequency domain is given. One can very clearly see there is a clear excitation of the heave frequency or power spectral density function of heave response at a specific frequency whereas, in surge it is on the lower side and pitch is shifted from the top E frequency for a north C for TLP 1. For a new year wave simulated again a similar response is seen of course, there is a second response also seen in heave degree of freedom under the extreme waves generated as we saw just now. When you change the angle of approach one can see all 6 degrees of freedom are now active, yaw is not active because the platforms remain symmetric and one can see very clearly that there are second small peaks occurring in the heave still which was also seen for wave approach angle of 0. So, the extreme waves excited TLP nearer to a natural frequency in heave and pitch degrees of freedom. TLP is also seen to be sensitive for different wave directions under such extreme waves. They are also sensitive with respect to the water depth. As you see here, the responses for deeper water depths are significantly different from the top shallow water depths. Phase plots of the response under New Year wave anyway show in heave an extended elliptical approach which shows the platform still remains stable, but however, the platform is challenged on stiff degree of freedom as you see here. One can also see the maximum variation in the response under the new year wave and not C wave comparing these two in all 6 degrees of freedom. So, friends one can say that extreme waves so friends extreme waves can excite tlp near to their natural frequency in stiff degrees of freedom that is heave and pitch in the studies what we just now saw. TLPs also show sensitivity 
So, wave direction under extreme waves increase in water depth increases the response by as high as about 50 percent. So, in this lecture we understood the responses under impact, non-impact and extreme waves. So, friends if you look at the summary of this lecture, we learnt how to simulate the impact and non-impact waves, how to simulate the extreme waves using series of sea surface elevation superposition. We understood that these set of waves which cause special loads in offshore structures trigger stiff degrees of freedom especially heave and pitch and of course, since heave is coupled surge is also triggered. So, a complaint system of an alternate geometry is also investigated. So, it is of interest to all offshore engineers that geometric optimization and the dynamic response behavior of these platforms under special loads caused by impact and non-impact waves resulting in ringing and springing responses respectively is of a very high academic interest. Thank you very much.